In this video I will be discussing with you a V-shaped hasty fighting position. This is a two-man fighting position that you do if you're going to stop at any location for longer than a few hours, you know, up to about a day. As you see, it has two legs on it that connect at the rear. The depth in the front is almost surface level. The depth in the back is about the depth of your e-tool. This position should take you about 20 to 30 minutes to dig with troops that have done it before that are experienced. If they are inexperienced, you could expect anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours. Both of those times depends on the type of soil. If it's really rocky, there's a lot of roots, it's tough like it's clay soil, it's probably going to take you longer regardless. In sand, from my experience, it takes you a lot less time. Now, the width of each leg of the position should be the width of the troop that's going to be inside wearing their gear. So that means body armor, pro mask, everything. The length, the length should be longer than the height of the troop. Because at the very back, where it slopes down to the steepest point, you need to put in a grenade sump. The grenade sump is where grenades will roll to if they're tossed into the position. The depth of the grenade sump should be the, the height of your entrenching tool from handle to the end of the blade. The width should be the width of the blade. And then how far across should be as wide as the position there. You should have one on both sides, both legs. I didn't do one over there because I was pressed for time. Now at the front of your position, you'll see two stakes sticking out of the ground. Those are limiting stakes. Those are to keep you from swinging your rifle too far to the right or too far to the left so that you end up pouring fire into neighboring positions. Do not use dry or rotted wood for those limiting stakes. Use fresh green wood. It's going to be a lot harder to knock out of the ground. You also want it to be pretty thick, so you want it at least an inch and a half thick. You get that wood usually from saplings that you have to cut down in your lanes of fire, your kill zone. You cut down a sapling or two to clear out the area so that you got better kill zone. Well, utilize that wood, turn them into limiting stakes. Now, the first thing you do before you dig this position, you need to draw it out on the ground. Use a stick, use a shovel, and trace out the position. Make sure it's wide enough, make sure it's long enough before you start digging. Now as you pull out the spoil, the dirt from the inside, you toss it on the sides and in the center. These piles of dirt, these mounds or berms, should be wider than they are tall. That is so that they will absorb in incoming rounds. Now what we used to do to camouflage these positions, if we did this in a grassy area, we would cut out the sod blocks first. Those sod blocks we would put over these berms. We would start at the front and work our way back with the sod blocks because it was more important that they were camouflaged to the front than they were to the back. We would then go and get leaves and cut down long, tall grass. And we would sprinkle that over the berms and for protection to uh, concealment from air, we'd sprinkle some of it inside the position also. So if a helicopter went over, they hopefully wouldn't notice the position. Now I have noticed uh, keyboard generals online make some pretty stupid comments about fighting positions. 
stuff like well it's not going to be deep enough to protect you from incoming fire people are just going to shoot over the top of the ground and hit you in the head that's what those berms are for well if you're going to be shooting from there you're going to shoot your buddy because you're going to swing your rifle too far to the right or left that's what the limiting stakes are for well someone's just going to kill you if they toss a hand grenade inside that's what the grenade stump is for the grenade sump, the grenade rolls down inside, it's meant to focus the blast straight up and away from the people that are inside. Some of the fragments will be caught inside, but most of the explosive force will travel the path of least resistance, which is straight up. That's why you want to make sure your grenade sumps are nice and deep so that it has a more of a distance to travel to form that uh, wave going straight up instead of straight out where it could possibly hit you. This used to be a position they would teach you in basic training. You used to be timed and tested on building one of these positions when you went to the field. But I got a feeling nowadays they ain't doing that no more. So here you go. This is a V-shaped hasty. Now, this is the basic position to go from this to a deliberate position because you're going to be there longer than a day. You dig it down to at least armpit depth over its entire length on the legs. And you move your grenade sump from the back to the front. So you're going to want at least the front half of each leg sloped towards the, gren the grenade sump in the front. Now to turn this into a bunker, you just add overhead cover going across the uh, V there, covering the legs, leaving about maybe a foot in front. You'll have a lot more dirt going then. You'll just take some logs, put them over the top, put a few on the sides to help support the ones over the top. Then you'll sandbag over the top of those logs and you'll put more dirt so you mound it. The back will be open so that you can jump in and out of the position. Uh, what we used to do as engineers, we used to build steps coming off the back so that we could just walk down the steps to get into the back of the position. It was a lot easier than jumping down and jumping in. Now, if you're doing this in sandy soil, make sure that each leg is a lot wider than you would normally do it because the sides will collapse in some over time. If you're doing this in an area with loose soil and you're doing going to the deliberate stage or the bunker stage, you're going to want to revet the sides. What that means is you're going to want to use plywood or corrugated steel or saplings weaved uh, amongst each other making matting to protect the sides to keep them from collapsing down in. I have heard of positions collapsing in on the troops inside because they weren't smart enough to realize they needed to revet the sides. Now one uh, little uh, safety note. On the grenade sumps, do not use an M9 bayonet for the M16. Someone I know once tried that and he actually broke the tip off his bayonet. It's okay to use the M7 bayonet because of the type of steel they use, but the M9, it's kind of a poured steel, not really forged, and they do snap. Now the orientation of each leg of the position needs to cover your kill zone. You should have interlocking fire with each leg plus with any positions to the right or left. This is a basic task that everyone should know, but I'm going to put this under engineering tasks. Now to all my engineer brothers in the Patriot and Militia movement, always remember, essay ons.